want for our association to go to MetroList is to give our agents a raise. I'm going to be saving $2,000 a year of my hard-earned money by being a member of MetroList because now I don't have to belong to both individually. So I hope this brings a great savings to you as well. Also, MetroList is offering us state-of-the-art technology that, frankly, our small association just could not afford to bring you. We really wanted our members, our subscribers, our agents to have the best of all worlds. And for that, we really needed to join MetroList. Cool. Hello, everyone. So, okay. I've got a lot of smiling faces, right? Uh, uh, I'm sorry I'm saying I have a cold and, you know, whatever the flow so, but I, I really didn't want to miss this because, like Andre, I don't get out enough. And <laughs> like, uh, so really, is we, we're doing a lot. We're doing a lot in onboarding Nevada MLS into Prospector. And I'm excited because it's a lot of work, a lot of effort of the team to bring on the MLS data. And that itself is a huge accomplishment. But not only that, we're looking at the office records, the member records, uh, some of you are dual MLS members, uh, some are not, some of you are uh, going as a reciprocal users. There's a lot of different situations, use cases that we look at, and we have to evaluate and try to get you in a good path to log into Prospector when we cut over. All right, so I'm gonna go over a lot of details, uh, not too much on the technical, but we can get there if you like, um, and we can save some of those questions for you know after FAQ. But so obviously, like Dave said, uh, on the left, that's your current system you're using on the left. That's your Prospector MLS. I'm sorry, that's your MLS from Rapitality. On the right, it is the Prospector system, right? So uh, raise your hand if you've gone into Prospector. If you're dual member, SSO, right? So good. So a lot of you have. So right, it's a great thing because it's very similar. Like Bill said, take advantage of the spring training. Go get some more training from our training staff. They're gonna help you identify the differences, help you on the tweaks, and make you a little more efficient now that you're on uh, this platform. Right turn. So we're not just bringing over the listings and the, we're bringing over photos, we're bringing attachments, the property history, and you can see probably the top 10, 20% is gonna be very similar. One here I want to highlight are some differences that you'll notice uh, compared to your current MLS. Uh, you currently do 30 photos, and um, the land lenses you don't need so many, but some of those beautiful properties you guys have, they need the interior photos, right? So you get up to 99 photos, right? Uh, you don't need that many of the bathroom, right? <laughs> Whether listing, warrant, safe, yes, you can have a lot more photos, and we heard that from our users, so we did increase that just recently. Uh, property directions, we have increased that also. Um, we were up here about six weeks ago with your, some of your MLS committee and some of the uh, uh, leadership, and they said, yeah, if you follow the GPS, sometimes you're gonna run into where, you know, dead end road or something, you really gotta follow the directions that are the property listing, right? And the property directions. So you have to have 500 characters. Confidential agent remarks, uh, agent to agent communication with about that property can be done in this section, and it's uh, a lot of verbiage you can use. So, those are some of the big ones, and there's a bunch of other little things there. Um, a lot of the details that uh, like Dave talked about, I'm going to talk about, and Nicole. Nicole's going to get my hand talk about lock box and training, money. So, that's going to get your attention. You're going to start writing things down, a lot of dates, a lot of information. Very important to understand at the bottom here, we have a URL. Uh, if you want to take one good note, that's the one. It's MIC for Metrolist Information Center. Mick.metrolist.net and then slash Nevada. Great, a lot of you are writing down. I appreciate that. So that's Mick Metrolist. And you'll see this throughout the screen, okay? So there we go. Uh, so the transition. Um, there we go. This is the walker, right? The leadership. So one of the things, and we heard a suggestion of what are you going to bring over? Because we're really on the same platform, right? Rapitoni, Rapitoni. There's some stuff, a lot of commonality, and there's some stuff that we can bring over. Uh, one of the things uh, we haven't done yet, but I know we can do it, so we're going to go ahead and bring your agent profiles, right? And so that means if you have one on your Nevada system, you have, uh, if you go under uh, uh, admin, so it's on the far right in the menu bar, and you go agent prefer um, uh, 
Oh God, I'm thinking about agent information, or agent profile, sorry. Agent profile, you can put in information, like a bio about yourself, and you can upload a photo. So when Teresa says she needs to update her photo, um, yeah, uh, don't worry about that. Whatever you have on your MLS today on Nevada, when we cut over, and that date will be May 7th, you'll see it a little bit later, we're gonna bring over whatever you have in your Nevada system and replace it in what's on the prospector system. All right, so we'll bring over the photo and update it, whatever you have for your bio. That's what we're gonna do for you. Uh, we're gonna bring over your agent preferences. Agent preferences is the same thing under admin. Admin, you go to agent preferences. Uh, you can see here there's about eight things, and if you hit each one of these, they collapse. Each of these submenus collapse, like what status you wanna do, what you wanna do for your default email node, your signature, uh, it may be specific. Uh, uh, prospecting is kind of not gonna do that one, but Maybe in your hot sheet, you know, what status is you want in your hot sheet. Okay, so this we're going to bring over as much as possible and we'll bring over your contacts. What are your contacts? So that's where, uh, again, under contacts and it's under contacts and prospects. We're bringing over first thing, last thing, uh, the email address and any notes you have for that contact. So that's it's going to cart over and we have added to that. Okay, mm -hmm. we're not going to bring over the search though. Okay, let me make that clear, unfortunately. We'll bring over the contacts but not to search. It searches, you're gonna to have to rebuild on your own, okay? Right. Here's a little bit of status transitions. Um, when you guys went to Rapitoni, I'm not sure if you're aware of, but when you created your MLS and you use your, you know, you have your profile sheets or your property types, residential, lots of land, mobile, what have you. When you did, went to the Rapitoni system, you guys uh, used as a template the MetroList profile <coughs> as a basis. So your structure of the property details and attributes reflect Metrolist quite a bit. Additionally, uh, these statuses are, were very similar to ours. Uh, right now on the left, this is what you have, the active, the active short sale. And I believe we did this also in Metrolist about three or four years ago as we were having that downturn, a lot of REOs, what have you. Just recently, and we're talking about in January this year, we refined that list, kind of uh, shrunk it down, and in Metrolist, this is how your active, they're going to active, your active short still, short sale, excuse me, will still be active. What we've introduced is this other concept called special listing conditions. All right. Special listing conditions is, if you will, the special category that identifies that listing specifically for one of these values. Right. And these values, so there's not that many listings, right? If you have 50 listings, the odds of one being a short sale, so that's not so high. But if you want to exclude it, you can search by special, you can exclude it on your search. If you're looking for one specifically, you can include it. So it just helps in the status. So as we map this stuff over, again, you can see there is this information. This will be on the MIC, right? The Nevada conversion page as we talked about, transition. So here's what we talked about earlier, right? Your forms. Uh, this right here on the far left is where we use our current input forms. Uh, these are real, uh, we use them daily. I uh, use them when you have a new listing, you want to fill it out, you go to data input. Uh, so what we've done for Nevada, we know you're uh, going online. So what we've done is taking our existing sections and wherever your information fits. And if you recall, you used Metro's at the basis many years ago. So we took that information and we're able to put in new information that we didn't have. So if you have some unique values, they were important, and we met with the MLS committee, and this was about a month ago, and talked about, this is where we see the data going back and forth, and it's a yes, that's correct, not correct, and we worked in the list. So in some situations, we added new values, new categories. In the end game, we added 179 new of these values throughout all the property classes. So we're trying to represent uh, your feature-rich data in the prospector system, okay? So all this data that we're adding is gonna convert uh, so we did that just recently, like last Tuesday. That was happening. So we're ready, our system is ready to bring in and just your listings. We uh, have all the new values, okay. All right, this is, I know it's a busy chart. <laughs> it has a lot of data in here. Uh, I know Kathy was very proud, and so I, I did this for her, and for me is that you guys have 20 years of data in your current system, 20 years. That's great, that's really robust. Uh, I like that. As a matter of fact, when I compare it to our MLS, yeah, we're 20 years into it too, as far as data going back. So this is listings by entry date, the day you entered into the MLS. Now, 
As you can see, I went back uh, 20 years, but if you come over the over here, start center flow, and then what happened right about this point was we see that in up here, for example, you guys in Nevada had 4,000, 3,000 listings entered that year into your system, in your entire system. Right now, your entire system, you have about 69,000 listings. Right now, active, comms, everything all around. Um, in Metrolist, we have 1.7 million. Probably, yeah, just in that. Um, but in Nevada County only, Nevada County and Prospector, we have 1,600 that entered that year in 2007 compared to 36, 38. Okay. Um, so you can see it kind of got traction after a while. We were up to high 40s percent, we went down to 35, and we're down here, I think, in probably the mid 30s percent. All right, so what does this mean? <laughs> the long story short is that when we bring your data over, guess what's going to happen? Do we want to bring all your data in? Do we want to bring this data into an existing data? Uh, so for you, to, for those people that do analysis, a little bit more of the nerds, what's going to happen? You don't want that data because no. you're going to have duplicate listings. It's going to skew your reports, your inventory. Uh, Dave was talking about trend graphics, and trend graphics wants to get an accurate picture of what's happening in a specific area. Well, this is not good. So what we have to do is go through a process what we call D duping, duplication of the listing records. So we run, in the back end, we run some queries via SQL, find the data, look at it manually, uh, and start that process to make sure we identify. We're looking at property address, we're looking at parcel number, list dates, uh, listing agents, and what happens is not everybody puts the listing at the same time, right? So you put it into your MLS at the beginning of the month, and hopefully you did that same thing on Prospector, but maybe you didn't. Maybe you waited until the second or the third to put it into the MLS on Prospector. So do the listings match? No, it's the same listing, right? So we have to look for those. Maybe you waited two months before you added it into Prospector. You just kept it on the Nevada system. So we have a lot of different scenarios. We have typos sometimes, unfortunately, on the address. It gets worse when you get to lots of land because the APNs, no street address, what have you. So right now, I'm at at least 144 hours dedicated one person looking at the data and saying yes, no, yes, no. Okay, so it's a lot of work, but that's okay. We want good quality work at the end. Now, what does that mean? Uh, we're gonna bring all this data into your uh, into Prospector, so you'll see a timeline where we're gonna have you look at your inventory. And when you look at your inventory, we're gonna say yes, that listing came over, and we're gonna keep the one in Metrolist first, because we have history. And we have probably hopefully a little bit longer. So if it's truly uh, a duplicate sold on both systems, and that's the status that is, we'll keep the one on Prospector, and we'll tag the incoming one as a duplicate canceled and have it unapproved. Does anybody know what unapproved means? Oh, yeah. It means only you can see within your office. It's not exposed to the other agents. Okay. And then we may remove it at a later date. Okay. Uh, so, but there's some caveats to that. Uh, so just be aware of that. It's just, and you will get some emails and some information about these duplicate listings. Now, how many, so what did I say? We have, you guys have about 70,000 records, right? Listing records we talked about. Out of those 70,000, right now, we identified 21,000 of duplicates. So that's like 31% already are going to go into that status. That's quite a bit. Okay, that's worth in the end. We have good stats, good information, consolidated. We do CMAs, this, all this other stuff. You have good, accurate information to generate these reports. Okay. All right. Let me get some love to this side of the room. <laughs> so, uh, where are we at? And that, and the camera's on me. I think it's my better angle. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if you want to find your listing, the your current MLS number, uh, in your current system, you have an ML number, right? When you go to Prospector, you need to look at it. Go to the additional criteria. We have a field called original ML number. Type that MLS number you currently have in Nevada, and you'll return that listing. So if it's a duplicate withdrawn or it's active, it's sold, you'll find it that way. That's one way to find it. Uh, MLS areas over uh, touch on this briefly about you put a listing in into an area and you understand okay uh, can everybody raise your hand if you know where Lake of the Pines is right right now can you well define that area the border everything right everybody oh yeah it's easy right because Lake of the Pines is essentially very easy 
to identify. Yeah. <laughs> well, you didn't have this. You don't have this in your current system, do you? You don't have this shading. And Dave talked about it a little earlier. Um, you'll see it if you SSO to Prospector today. Okay. So this, we put this on the system on Monday this week. So just a few days ago, this became active. We worked with the MLS committee, and they helped us draw these lines. You didn't have these draw lines drawn <coughs> anywhere except a resource page I put on your site. We looked at it, and it was like 15 pages, and it was kind of conflated because it had MLS areas, and it had your tour areas in one. So it was kind of a little mash, and it was hard to understand. But with the MLS committee, they drew lines for us. We did it electronically, and this is what we have. So Lake of the Pines, is this what you all envision? Kind of the border of the Lake of the Pines? Great. Okay, uh, Ridge Road. Everybody knows Ridge Road, Zach? I think it's north of here. Uh, what area is that in? Is that in Grass Valley? Raise your hand if it's in Grass Valley. Uh, yeah, Grass Valley, and where else? Yeah, it's in good, great. All right. Uh, but it's even worse. Okay, now look at this. There's a Ridge Road. So now you can see some things happen here. What happened? We got to draw lines, folks. It's uh, yeah. The system is electronic, exact. If you put your listing, like Dave said, and you put it down here into what's this, Grass Valley? Yeah, the Grass Valley on your system now, that's fine. If you put it, you labeled it in Grass Valley, but the listing was actually right up here, guess what? That night, we're gonna move it for you back down here, okay? And we're gonna keep doing this until we'll win. <laughs> what we talk about. <laughs> now, actually, what can happen is, <clears throat> what we, we recommend, but really, yeah, we done this, uh, the committee spent hours going over this. If we, they all, we drew the line incorrectly, submit your feedback, I'll work with the MLS committee, and they can say, yes, Rick, we need to alter the line and maybe come this way. We can do that. We can alter it and change it within a couple of business days. All right? Start looking at it now if you can, please. Start looking at it, submit it, and we'll look with the MLS mapping committee to make sure these overlays work, okay? So you can see one thing here is important is these numbers, right? Uh, you're not used to that yet on your system, but if you go to a prospector, there are, right? So your areas, you describe them descriptive, right? The Bad City, Lake of the Pines. We have a number correlation to it. So when you search by area, you actually use these numbers. And okay, there's about 15 of them for each one of your areas. Okay. Uh, and where do you go find that information at? Where? Somebody said it there. There you go, this the MIG. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, go to the MIG. The information is there. Go online. That's the MLS areas overlay, okay? So very important. Try to get this because we gotta get this right. I, there's a really small window of opportunity because once you cut over, you know, people get really, you'll be really concerned because people searching, you know, in a Nevada City and they can't find my listing. And it's just crossed that line. That line shouldn't be there, should be here. Well, you need to hear from you. Do we really think that? Let's go ahead and vet it out. Okay. Uh, an important uh, requirement here is want to highlight for those that have pretty much active inventory or pending inventory, when we bring that data into Prospector and you go to update the price, the status, um, it's going to ask you for some required information. So there's about 20 fields we need more information. We couldn't get this data and convert it directly to our system. Okay, These are new fields that you don't have and I don't want to take uh, the liberty of making that decision. right? So do you guys have a downstairs bedroom in that property? Yes, no. Right. So a lot of these you can probably answer on the fly. Uh, <coughs> if you're in a pinch and you want to complete that transaction on that listing, there's something, usually there's a none or other. Okay. You always can come back and up here in the All right, here's some key dates. Remember, uh, you can write them down, they're online. But uh, begin now. Yeah, go ahead and enter your listing to both systems. Uh, get familiar if you're not. Learn all those required fields uh, because we're going to bring them over. Your system, for us to bring it over and convert that data to the new prospector system, we have to put your system, that we call it search only or read only. So on April 30th, you can still access your Nevada system. However, you cannot modify or add your listing. <coughs> you just cannot touch it. We have to freeze it, take that data from your system, bring it to ours, go through a bunch of scripts, transform that data, and then we're gonna do, uh, verify the data is accurate the way we want. We already done that once already we'll do it again here on friday and then we'll do it again here so we're going to verify once we see everything's good we're targeting may 7th we give ourselves a week so on may 7th uh, that's when we bring everything over the listings are there now they're available to revise 
uh, you can add, definitely always add one. They revise that listing. So uh, if you had a listing and you put in both systems, and all of a sudden, uh, on April 30th, is there April 31st? No, okay, May 1st. On May 1st, thanks, Bob. On May 1st, uh, you get uh, great. It was, it was active, and then you got an offer, you go pending. What do you do? Anybody know? Get with them Change. Change it on Metro because you did the right thing. You added in both systems. Don't worry about the one in Nevada because you can update the one on Metroist directly on Prospector. You have an updated price or updated status. Update it there. Where does the data go? It might be here in a few minutes. It goes to the portals. It goes to you know the our public sites. It goes to uh, Homes.com, the Zillows, and all this. So do update them on both systems, right? So here you can. May 1st through the day. More than likely, this is a whole week. It shouldn't impact you too much if you do both, just add them both directly. Uh, this seventh, though, I might actually go a little bit sooner. This is a week. I don't think I need a whole week. If we did our job right, it should be a shorter period of time. Okay. So that's May 7th. Uh, so again, we'll bring the listings, photos, comps. Uh, check your listing. Remember we talked about that duplicate? Make sure we turn the right duplicate off or on, right? Make sure that you can call us. Uh, we're bringing over your safe contacts, right? First name, last name, email. We're bringing over your preferences on this date. We're bringing your profiles. So on that date, we're bringing all that data over and making it live. So verify all that looks good. Uh, you, you can take a look at your uh, information on your current Nevada system because what's going to happen through the 31st, guess what happens pretty soon after that? We have to sunset your system, right? We've got to turn it off. And that's targeted May 31st. We shut the system off. Um, we have backups of it. We can get access to data. There's really discrepancy, but you really want to do everything and look at it, feel comfortable that everything converted properly of your data, that through this whole transition, your photos, the properties, the attachments, everything became over claim. If not, reach out to us, right? Uh, of course, the matter. <laughs> the matter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wrapping it up, and thank you for your time here, is that tech support. Uh, like Bill said, uh, we run our local a support center. Uh, this is back in Sacramento, and I do. Uh, there's a team of people just taking your calls. Um, we take a lot of the calls. We take them essentially. Uh, yeah, like 99% of my calls are taken live. So you call in more likely. If you get uh, once you get past the operator or even go through the automated machine, your wait times are now like 20 seconds. That's the average wait time. And then you get to somebody and they help you, and they know you're in Nevada. They know what's going on. They know about your listings. They can help you. They know the business rules. They know the compliance rules. They know where your data goes. So they can provide excellent customer support. Uh, 7 30 to 4 30, Monday through Friday. Uh, well knowledgeable. Uh, like uh, Bill says, some of us are pushing up to 30 years. And I have one guy on there. Uh, so, and they work with each other and help uh, collaborate quite often on anything that, to help you with those questions you may have. Um, Support. Uh, Bill said this a little earlier, but I want to touch on it. Is that yes, we just we support all these systems, all the software, the mobile devices, like David was talking about, along with the book. Yes, we support all the other ones. Where uh, tier one, tier two, meaning that I have a question about cloud system, we can help you that. And then if there's a problem, we can look at that. If we have direct communication for those folks, I have a problem with train graphics. I have so all these things. Our staff can do more than just give you a phone number to call. We'll try to help you find out the actual root cause of it and then elevate it. Or sometimes we can just handle it internally. It just depends. Uh, Bill also mentioned that we had the uh, only Rapatoni customer that has the license of software. Uh, what that really means is that we have all the servers built in and it, uh, in the cloud. It's uh, in a data center. It's virtualized, we have it backed up in another system, but we control all those resources. We can make changes and we create a lot of things. Uh, so it's uh, best of both worlds. We depend on the MLS vendor and we have a lot of local uh, knowledge about that. Okay? Um, that's all I have. Mike.